In today's episode of the Hexagon Challenge, we are all aboard the Leo Choo Choo train early doors as we catch up on a league game since yesterday's episode. We also tie up some loose ends that I forgot to cover in yesterday's episode as well. And we have our first league cup second round game against top tier big Colombian team Atletico Nacional. everyone welcome back to sean does fm i hope you have been doing well if you are new to the channel or you haven't done so yet then please do hit that subscribe button it is greatly appreciated and also turn that notification bell on so that you do get an update every time a video comes out on the channel yesterday's episode if you did not catch that was it was our first games since the winter update and we had a one all draw in the live com game against Bogota FC off the back of a 2-1 home win against Boca Juniors to Cully. We also rounded up transfer window then too, so it's a good episode to catch if you have not done so. Since then, we've only had the one league game. Uh, we'll, we'll get that out of the way before I tie up the loose ends that I forgot to cover in yesterday's episode that I mentioned in the episode 25. We had a league game against Valladupa that I played before I went to work this morning, and I hope you have your tickets ready, ladies and gentlemen and grab some refreshments because it is time to hop on the choo-choo train. Your captain is a Brazilian left winger called Leo. First 30 minutes, we had a pretty dominant display, but no end product. But luckily, Leo gave us a little bit of a refreshment break there, a penalty that he tucked away. The next stop was in the 40th minute, a nice tap in at the near post, his second of the game. And we kicked into gear very nicely in the second half. Once again, that man, Leo Chu, was able to capitalise on a missed here by Caicedo and buried that away bottom right corner. He was on a hat trick. It was free drinks on the train. As a paying passenger, I was very happy. Then in the 48th minute, Sinistera putting a ball in for Chu, a nice header into the bottom left corner. And then he decided to let the rest of the teammates have a go at driving the train. This one, Bazozzi Caicedo had a shot and Roman... Look at that cheeky little chip after the rebound fell to him. That was 5-0 in the 80th minute. And then late on, Pasozzi, our uh, replacement striker, had a shot blocked, but he, he then received, received the ball back, played it to a young right winger, Hernandez, and wrapped things up at 6-0. Obviously, man of the match in that game, Leo Chu. Yeah, just drove that team that game. He was absolutely superb. Marilanda, of course, was out after picking up just a minor knock in the game prior, which I'm about to get to an injury update because you will notice that we had to make some changes. Both Hernandez and Basozzi coming on early-ish in the game, at least earlier than I would have liked. But that performance was quite relieving, I would say, because after the first two games of this match engine, I just didn't know if this tactic... I was wondering if our strikers or our, our goal scoring had just dried up because we... We're creating a lot of chances in those previous games, but really struggling to put the ball in the back of the net. This time, much better. Six goals, and again, very dominant stat-wise, so I think this tactic is going to hold up okay in terms of the new update with the match engine. We are taking a lot, a lot of long shots still, which might be why we aren't being as clinical. But a very good performance. Leo Chu, as I said, just absolutely dominant. So now we've got the Choo Choo train references out the way. Um, we had some injuries going into that game. Both Christian Oligo and Yaseb Marilanda were both coming back from injuries and not quite right with this cup game coming up. I didn't want to risk them. Now, in that game, we had injuries to Hernan Venegas. He went off in the first half and his injury is the most severe. He is out for three to six weeks with sprained knee ligaments. If you did not see the transfer episode yesterday, you would have known that the reason that we bought Basozzi in was just in case Venegas got injured. So luckily, I had a plan, and even though I didn't really want it to have to come to fruition, it has paid off early because Basozzi will be taking the first team place. So... It is a big injury for us. He is our main striker, but I think we've got adequate cover there now. And also, Jean Labastidas went off 
early doors, which allowed Hernandez to come on. His injury, not so bad, only out for one to three days. It does mean he's going to miss this cup game. Today, though, you can also see Sebastian Kuenu, who has been out for a long time now, our starting left back at the start of the season. Of course, he did a Achilles tendon. He's not far away from coming back, but he is going to need match fitness, so we might be a little while before we see him back in the first team. And Sebastian Acosta, of course, came in for him and is doing a really good job at left back. The other thing that we didn't cover in yesterday's episode that I should have was the end of episode 25, I was flirting with the idea of leaving the club and maybe joining some new teams. There were some interesting jobs that had come up. I did not get any of those jobs, which is why I didn't really bring it up yesterday. But one interesting thing that happened was a job came up in China with Tianjin Tedder. In the end, I didn't wasn't as attracted to the job as I was in the end because their remaining budget compared to the other clubs in the division wasn't as good as I initially thought it was. Like you look at this balance here, they had 90 million left in terms of their actual transfer budget for 1.1 million in wages. Their mid-table top tier Chinese team, I thought maybe we could push them up and maybe that would make me a bit more attractive to the likes of Guang Zhao who turned me down yet again. However, we didn't get the job, but what they did was they sent me an email and what they asked me to do before actually giving me a job interview was that they asked me if I could talk my club into reducing the compensation they would have to pay me if they wanted to hire me as manager. If they had already offered me a job interview, I might have actually accepted that, but I tried to get the board to take my compensation down. They weren't having it. And with us not having had an interview, it sort of felt like a bit of a risk to resign from the job here at Kakuta Deportivo just to have a shot at a job that I didn't really feel like I might entirely get. If you have had that, let me know if you've actually got the job without being interviewed, because that would be interesting. You can see they went with a Mexican, Cabajal. I mean, in terms of reputation, we're outdoing him. And as a manager, he is only one in Mexican expansion league, so I think maybe we maybe we would have got that job. But in the end, I turned it down. I mean, in China, you do need a lot of money, because the teams over there spend lots and... It's a mid-table team, maybe with 92 million, maybe we wouldn't have quite been able to get enough done. I don't know. In the end, we're still here at Kakuta Deportivo, and we will see the season out now anyway, unless an amazing job comes up. And what I mean by that is a team who are still in like a Champions League, who still could do something in the Champions League. Obviously, we're in uh, July, so most of the seasons in uh, Europe and that are just starting. In terms of the jobs available at the moment, you can see... There's not a lot to get too excited about. There's not really any reason to be leaving quite at the moment. I think we'll just keep improving our reputation. As you can see, we're now up to about two and a quarter stars. And what I will do while I'm here is ask to start another coaching course. And hopefully after this game, they will let me. Um, you can see there we've now had 113 games played. One more win will get us our 100th win. Hopefully that's today, although my hopes are not Hi, so this is the first league of a two-legged cup tie against top-tier Atletico Nacional. The reason I am not confident, they are a very good team. They are fifth in the second phase of the top division season early on in that. So we'll look at the first stage and they finished second. So they are a serious team. We played Alianza Petrolera and Umbergado and did quite well against them in our cup group stage prior to this, but those two teams are a long way behind this team, so this could be quite a challenge for us today. Would have liked to have some of our players who are injured available, just to see how they do cope with this level, because this is a good barometer heading into next season, should we be promoted. Obviously, we are already guaranteed to be in a promotion playoff, even if we don't do so well in the second stage of the league season. But it's going to be a good test for us here, and I'll update what we're going to do in the next episode after this game. Okay, we are about to kick off. I thought this game had TV coverage, and it did not, so we'll just go back and give you guys a quick rundown of our team. I don't expect you to know anyone in the, in the opposition team. Just know that, obviously, being top tier, they are probably better than us. In terms of our team, it is the team that I would consider our strongest. The only changes we've had to make are due to the injuries to Labastidas. We've brought Elkin Murillo back in. He's just recovered 
from an injury, so he will start on the right wing. And Lucas Basozzi, of course, coming in for Hernan Venegas. You see that Maralanda is starting this game. It's probably a bit harsh on Leo too, but we haven't had too long in between games. And we do have a league game coming up in, after this, and we might be able to give the Choo Choo train a chance in that game. But it's pretty much as strong as we can do, considering the injuries. And we will get into this kickoff. We are playing left to right in our usual red and black kit and Atletico Nacional uh, in white mainly with a green stripe down the middle and early on they will have a throw in half a minute gone as I said this game is really just a chance for us to test out how good we are and that's a pretty cynical foul early doors and Ortiz will get booked foul on Basuzzi our new striker the Argentinian but three minutes gone and it is still nil all we are now 10 minutes into the game. We have a throw in, but it is cut out by Atletico Nacional, and they look to counter us through Mosquera. Hopefully, we can shut down these counter attacks. We are on positive. I didn't really feel like there was much point in changing things in terms of mentality. Maybe we'll do that if we start getting hammered. As I said, this game is really one that I'm just sort of half spectating and seeing how the boys do get on with a potential promotion next season in mind and we did clear that danger away but have given it straight back to Atletico Nacional and they look to build something from the back here this highlight hasn't finished which makes me wonder and Mosquera is in behind here it's a good save from Sandoval don't know how he got in behind our defense so easily there that's a bit of a concern only playing the standard line of defence. We're not up with a high line or anything. They take the corner outside the box, but it goes back to Serrano. He puts a ball in. It is blocked, and Basozzi's going to get on the end of this, and we might have a counter-attacking chance here. Don't know how his pace is, but he's going to play Maralanda, and right now we're in. Come on, boy. It's straight at the keeper, though. We have preferred him to play that back to Basozzi, and then that probably would have been a goal, but the ball the other way around was good, and our first big chance of the game, unfortunately goes straight at the keeper, and the corner is cleared away, Suarez ties it up, it goes back out to Acosta, he puts the ball in, Mario heads it, but straight at Lara, and he was offside anyway, some good early chances for us, but nil all after 15 minutes throw in here to Atletico Nacional, we have headed it away unfortunately Sinistera can't get to the ball, so Nacional will hold possession and Oloyo now goes inside the box. Uh, Roman hit a nibble at him. And indeed, that's a penalty. That's a really poor tackle from Roman there. Can't complain about that. And no card, it looks like. And indeed, it is no card, which is probably a bit lucky. Mosquera with the penalty. Yeah, he buried that top right. Too much power for Sandoval in goal. And unfortunately, we go 1-0 down. Bit harsh that I thought we'd been playing quite well, but we blew our best chance. And Roman's just gifted them one there. He had a couple of nibbles at the player, and indeed, in the end, gave away a penalty. And we are 1 0 down early here in the cup. Throw in now, Roman looking to redeem himself from giving away that penalty. He puts it in long, but Lara claims it nice and easy. A pretty good start from us, but yeah, just not taking our chances. Hopefully that doesn't become a theme in these live com games, obviously. Oh, well, there we go. They've given us a penalty straight back. Arroyo this time taking out the young right winger in Murillo. And is it? Who's taking the penalty? I think I saw Basozzi. It is. And he buries it. That's a really good penalty into the far left corner. And we are back on level terms. And I think that's the least that we deserve given the way this game's gone. I think we've been really good so far. And we've finally got some reward from it. And if this is anything like the last game, once we scored a goal, we started really kicking into gear. Basozzi's first goal for the club, and we are level and may have a crucial away goal after 25 minutes. Long throw after half an hour. Acosta whips this into Basozzi. Again, it's a tackle, but no penalty this time. The player's getting quite aggressive in the box in this game, it seems. Already had a penalty each team. That could have been another. Nice ball there for Maralanda. What can he do here? Puts it in, a Ray goes in. Oh, but it is saved. I think a player might have been offside if the keeper didn't hold that for the tap-in. But we're creating good chances. All our shots so far on target. 
Only the one goal from that penalty, it remains 1-0, one, one all I should say, as we come up to half time. And that is half time, one all, based on the run of play. You'd, I mean, you look at the stats and you'd say it's about right. I think in terms of the highlights that we've seen, I'd say that we at least do deserve this draw. I think we've had the better chances in that first half. They had a good one that was saved by Sandoval in goal, but we had a couple that could have gone in the back of the net and the penalty to each team. Yeah, I think we're doing quite well. Slightly edging position. They, according to the stats, have had more clear-cut and half chances, but I didn't see many of those in, the, in those highlights, so I don't quite know what they're going on about there. Uh, our defence in terms of ratings, are struggling, which is a little bit of a concern. Uh, we might have to rejig that at some point. I'm going to tell the boys we've been the better team here and keep doing what they're doing. We've got a bit of faith in them, and hopefully the boys can come out. and Maybe we can pinch a lead going into the second leg, but in saying that, a one-all draw would not be bad at all away from home against top division of position and we are kicking off the second half playing right to left and Suarez linking up the defenders and pumps one forward to Maralanda who dribbles straight into a defender but gets it back now Acosta puts a ball in headed away by the national defense they look to build something but that's the end of that highlight still one all early on in the second half and we have another highlight Lara with the goal kick but he's given it straight back to us. Maralanda cutting inside. He'll look to find a Costa here, I think. No, he tried a through ball, but I've given it straight back to him. He has a shot that's blocked, and now Suarez will recover that clearance. So we've got a good little spell early doors, although that was an interesting end to that highlight. It remains one all after 50 minutes. Okay, so there's some pretty average ratings out there. Three players on a 6.4, but of more concern to us, Maralanda's carrying yet another injury, um, a knee injury. That's not ideal. He's only just coming back from one. We may as well not hold the choo-choo train up. He's going to come straight out there and try and influence this game. In terms of other changes, I think we'll bring John James on for Roman. He gave the penalty away, of course, and he's starting to lose a bit of fitness, a player who is clearly our best right back. So we'll make the most of being able to give him a rest while we can. And... After this, Mario did earn us that penalty, so I'm surprised he's only on a 6.4. And also a new centre-back, one Jose Martin, is not having the best game. Between Hernandez and Ordinez, the best of those players is probably Ordinez. But I think we'll leave things with just those two subs for now and see how they get on. And we'll try something else later as Edmund Screen picks up a yellow card. We do have a long throw here, though. It is put in deep into the box, but Lara able to come out and collect it. And the highlight has not ended. Edmonds Green heads that back to the keeper. Luckily gets it back far enough. A few goals I have seen conceded with balls played back to the keeper that haven't quite reached him in this year's game. But we will build something now. Mario James and Mario's going to go back here. Can he put a ball in for Basozzi? He can and we're up 2-1. Elkin Mario, yeah, I thought that rating was a bit harsh on him. He earned the penalty, and he has helped set up that goal with our new right-back, Jean James, another youngster. And all of a sudden, things are looking very good here against a high-caliber team. Nice one-two between those two. Finds Basozzi. I think the other player there might have been Chu, who could have got that if Basozzi missed it, but he's buried that top left, and we are up 2-1 away from home. Okay, I'm going to make a change here. It's not what I was planning on doing, but we'll bring Ordinaires on for Edmonds Green with that yellow card. I just want to shore up that defence, not have them easing off tackles when we do have a lead to protect. Now, Leo Chu's also picked up a yellow card, but we don't have many, many options in terms of making a change in that direction. I'd rather have the defence be nice and solid as we come into the last 20 minutes and we hold a 2-1 lead. Can we cause an upset here? Long throw, 10 minutes to go. James, not sure how good he is at long throws. That would suggest not very. <laughs> it was cleared pretty comfortably, but he's put another ball in for Mario. He finds Chu. He has his shot. First one blocked, and the second one hits the post. It's a goal kick. We are being very good here. I'd have to say it would be a bit harsh if they came back and scored against us now, but it might be happening because Mosquera is through here. 
It's over the bar though, luckily, because that would have been very soft. Still 2-1 at the 82 minute mark. Another long throw here, 83 minutes gone. James gets a bit more on that one. And Hull heads that clear and maybe they'll get us on the counter here. Gutierrez now plays it back. Well, that could be a pretty poor pass, and it is, but Sozzi's on this. Can he play the ball for Leo Chu? You bet he can. And our man on fire, all aboard the Choo Choo train. It's another goal for Leo Chu. What a signing. He's been early doors. I know it. he's not much better than the player that we saw in Almasalas, but boy, that's five goals in two games. It's a really poor ball there from Atletico Nacional. And Basozzi puts it in for Chu, and he's had a hand in all three goals now. And three, one up. Away from home, this is a very good result. I think we might just tell the boys to slow things down a bit here because as much as I'd like to keep pumping them, we do have a second lead to consider here. We'll just have some shorter passing, a bit of a lower tempo, and frequently time rate waste, and see how that goes for these last six minutes. 3-1, Kakuta Deportivo. Right, we are now into the 91st minute. And it is a highlight to Atletico Nacional. Hopefully we can not concede. But that ball has been cleared away from Arrigo. Uh, and now Basozzi's on the counter here. And can he do something? He's as fast as defender. He could have played a ball there to his right and played someone in. He didn't opt to. He was after his hat trick. And the shot. And then straight at the goalkeeper. And we are now coming right up to full time. Past the 94th minute. We do have a corner. We are taking a lot of time over it, as you would expect. Martinez tries to get his head to it, can't. And that is full time. A 3-1 win against the team who finished second in the top tier for the first stage of the season. A very good result. The only goal we conceded was from a penalty. We got one of those in the first half. That was the score at halftime. One all in the second half. Basozzi was able to net one and then off a bad pass from the Atletico Nacional. Defence, we capitalised and Leo Chu put one in the back of the net. Of course, that second Basozzi goal coming after some nice play down the right between James and Murillo. A couple of young stars coming through the club, but a very good performance in the end. More shots, one more on target, but in the end, I think that second half did sort of stat-wise balance out what I thought was happening in the first half in terms of the clear-cut chances and such that I thought we had the better of that first half, and it continued in the second, at least based on those highlights like we saw. Good to see Lucas Bazzozzi coming straight into the team and performing as well, and as well as some of our depth players, the likes of James, Mario, and Chu, after Marilanda potentially has picked up a knock. But that is a very nice lead to take into the home league, even so even a 2-0 loss at home there would actually still see us go through, so that's very good. Hopefully we can score a goal at home. I like to think we can. We'll tell the boys we are very happy with that. People had ridden us off. We were strong outsiders for that. That is a great result. And maybe it was just the fitness in those first two games that meant that we weren't putting our chances away because all of a sudden it looks like we are clicking back into gear in the second half of the season. The board do not want me to have a coaching badge because they fear that a bigger club will come in for my services. Yeah, that's one of the reasons I don't mind looking for jobs because every single club I've been to has had the same issue. Caversham, then Hamilton Wanderers, and now Kakuta Deportivo. After I get my first coaching badge at a club, they do tend to really dig their heels in and not let me improve. It's probably the one area that's holding me up at the moment. Uh... I'll, I'll tell them we might get left behind by rivals. And there we go. We've talked them into it. Right, I'm a happy chappy now. We've got a coaching badge coming on the way. So that is good. It's going to reduce my impact at training. But to be blunt, we don't actually do a lot of training here. It's mostly sort of match preparation type of stuff. But a very good 3-1-1. We'll check this Maralanda injury. A twisted knee, six to eight days. It's not the end of the world, but... Not ideal either. It is nine days to our next game though, so I suppose he's probably going to be available for that, and we can always give Chu a run in that game. Uh, most of these players will actually be back in time for that next game. Kuenu, as I said, 
still recovering from that major injury and Venegas is going to be out for a while and we'll just we'll give uh, Basozzi a nice pat on the back I'll tell him he was superb in front of goal boost that ego and we are now going after our Continental B license for the next six months so we will be finishing that in January next year when the next season gets underway but that is going to be it for today's episode a very good result an unexpected one away from home at one of the top divisions top dogs in Atletico Nacional when we are back now only one game until the Orzo Marzo one uh, I am a little bit busy over the next few days of I'm getting a house built and we need to start picking the colour for the outside of the house and stuff like that. So I, the video to, for uh, tomorrow's video might not be until the day after. I'll try and get a bit of stuff pre-recorded ahead of time. But the plan is to have that Orzo Marzo game and Atletico Nacional game in a double header in the next episode. Whether that happens or not, we'll see. It might perhaps only be the Orzo Marzo one with the Atletico Nacional game the day after and off camera between that time I can start really tuning through the league season. Of course, what I hadn't factored into that was the chance of us actually progressing past the Atletico Nacional. So maybe after that game, it will be focusing on the cup mainly. But if you did enjoy that free one winner, really good one against a good team here in Colombia, then make sure to hit that thumbs up button. If you have not already, then please do subscribe to the channel. As I said earlier, it is greatly appreciated. And until the next episode, whether that's tomorrow or in a few days' time, and whether it's a double header or just the Orzo Marzo game, I will see you then and enjoy the rest of your day. Cheers. Yeah.